meeting minutes, Bridget? Absolutely, and we are live. Hey everyone, today is uh, Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020. Welcome to the Service Mesh Interface Community Call. Um, we're going to kick it off today with, I'm gonna say introductions, um, because I do see a few new faces. Um, and then we'll go ahead and go into stand up or discussion items. We have a few, um, and we have like the reminder to submit your blog posts. Uh, support for personas topic, and then support for routes in the metrics spec topic. So um, without further ado, does anyone new want to introduce themselves? Yeah, I can introduce um, myself. Oh. Yeah, I'm Jason Webb. I'm from Intuit. Um, and uh, I'm a uh, more of an end user of service mesh, not really a developer. Um, we do support the Admiral project um, out of Intuit, which is a multi-cluster orchestration um, for service mesh. But uh, primarily, I kind of look at service mesh more from an end consumer perspective. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Mike, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mike. I'm an engineering manager on the console team at HashiCore. So we're just interested in learning a little bit more about what's going on here. Awesome, thanks for joining us. Uh, anybody else want to introduce themselves? Me, I'll just say real fast, I'm Redbeard from Red Hat. It's been a while, uh, but I'm just kind of dropping in to check in on things and um, see where the community's been at for a bit so that I can go back and thump some folks on the head on the Red Hat side. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so nice to see you again, Redbeard. Yeah, it, it's a pleasure. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and, oh, anybody else? Okay, uh, if you do wanna introduce yourself at the end, feel free to drop that into chat and I'll make sure to check it out and save some room at the end. Uh, okay, so jumping right into our discussion items. Um, Bridget, I'll let you kick off about the blog post. Oh, yes, I know um, Solo and I think a couple of other organizations were thinking about writing blog posts. And my urge to you is, hey, KubeCon EU is coming up. A lot of people are gonna be looking at stuff in the Kubernetes space. Now could be the moment to write a blog post about what you're doing to use Service Mesh or uh, what you're implementing in the service mesh ecosystem, and then uh, submit that as a PR to the SMI spec uh, website repo. And the link is in the notes. Super cool, will do, thanks Bridget. I think another really good topic too would be um, like HTTP header matching support, like that recent edition. I feel like we're not really talking about it and stuff. So we should definitely uh, make that known that that's a thing and um, that people should check it out and implement it. I don't know why I muted myself. Okay, so the next um, topic is support for personas. Um, Jason, I know you wrote an intro here, but hopefully you can, um, uh, or Jason and Michael, it says Michael on the side there. Um, can y'all kind of give us uh, an idea of like what you want to see here, resummarize the summary? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess the kind of the where this has kind of come up, I guess, is, is as we sort of look at, at least more in depth with the Istio API, we haven't really adopted SMI um, directly. Most of what we use is the Istio API. Um, but as we look at that and how we can bring it into the, like the enterprise, um, there's a couple of challenges with it. Um, so the first challenge is the kind of, there, there's, there's different, um, you know, even though they're like maybe a service publisher, but I'm kind of acting in different roles depending on what I'm trying to do. So when I'm trying to, you know, offer author like routing configuration, for example, um, I'm sort of controlling how traffic gets to my service um, or I'm controlling access, for example, or the split, stuff like that. So it's more from like the service owner's perspective. Um, and also maybe there's some like defaults of how my service should be consumed. Like this is the timeouts that I would expect on a service maybe some default retries and stuff like that. But then there's also this, the, the client persona aspect of it where I'm consuming a service, um, 
And I want to be able to override some of those things. So I want to be able to set like the timeouts or my circuit breakers or re retries because upstream, I only want to retry once with a one second timeout because the UI is going to, um, you know, is going to time out beforehand and stuff like that. So you kind of need that ability to override sort of that consumption profile, I guess you would say, um, in a way that uh, is also isolated as well. So that's one of the, like without having that configuration broken out as a separate entity, it makes it really hard to put kind of authorization rules around it so we can run it in a multi-tenant environment. So with a lot of the server side configuration, what we end up doing at least is sort of putting a structure around the, the DNS names in the Istio configuration and then tying that back to basically a namespace. And then within that namespace, you can only configure certain kinds of DNS names. And that sort of gives us a, like an authorization containment based on the namespace, which is based on the team. And so that way people don't kind of impact each other. Um, but without having a way to kind of set things from a client perspective, it makes it um, pretty challenging. So the reason why I kind of brought this to this group is we were gonna to look to actually solve this problem kind of in, in our Admiral project and just use Istio configuration, introduce a couple CRDs um, to do this, and then just put orchestration to manipulate their configuration. So that's kind of the path we were going down, but I figured it would be maybe useful. This is kind of a, you know, a new project kicking off to kind of maybe bring some of this stuff to you guys and see what you guys thought about it. It was something you know, SMI was, is interested in. It's, it's, so none of the meshes, I think, kind of have this concept, so it's not necessarily pulling best practices back in. This would be a little bit more from the edge perspective of what's going on in the mesh um, and folding into the spec, which I don't know if that's appropriate for SMI or not. But anyways, I thought I would just bring it up with you guys and kind of as something as like an end consumer of, of mesh and how we're trying to get the APIs, you know, usable for an enterprise in a multi-tenant scenario with lots of clusters and stuff like that. Um, it's just something I'm seeing. So I thought I would bring it up to you guys. Yeah. Does anybody have any comments around that before I jump in? Yeah, I can comment on it. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of traffic access, um, I, I don't see how you can default to a separate configuration on the client side. Um, it's definitely an interesting idea. Uh, can you give me an example? Like, let's say you want, you have a namespace and in that namespace is a web API and for some tenant you want to uh, restrict some routes and for a different tenant you want to allow those routes. Is that a, a use case? Yeah, yeah, for like for traffic access, um, like so at least from, again, this is this is more of just the view of things that I've done, you know, within the stuff that we support, right? But what we'll do is we'll author, you know, there'll be a different set of kind of um, rules right, to kind of get almost like scope definitions in OAuth, I guess is the way you kind of, could kind of think about it, right? Where it's like, this is sort of, this, this sort of set of rules gives me access to this chunk of the API and this chunk of the API. And by default, a consumer would get, chunk, would, would get a chunk of maybe the uh, most generic part of the API, but more sensitive APIs might be left to only selective clients, right? So as a service owner, I might say, you know, this is a client that, you know, I know about and I'm gonna give them access to this particular chunk of the, the administration part of the API or something like that. Um, so that's sort of where I've seen it from an access perspective um, be useful. So we don't actually do that. I mean, I guess, so we don't actually do that with our service mesh implementation yet. We do that with our, our, our other infrastructure that we run, um, but we're moving that to service mesh. So we would, that's something that we would look to do in our service mesh implementation. Yeah, I, I guess it goes back to the identity problem, how you manage identity for all these clients. In, in SMI, we define identity in a very Kubernetes way. It's a service account. So we define how things uh, get access based on the service account that uh, initiates the call uh, and the service account that, uh, let's say, uh, is running the, the workload that you want to secure. So it's more about service accounts. I, for example, Istio also supports uh, auth authentication based on tokens. And that could, let's say, be different, totally different to service accounts. A service account is more about a machine uh, identifier than an actual user identifier. Yeah, I think so, so service or the system identifier is, is fine. Um, the, so where we run into problems using service accounts is 
um, especially as we run, as we look at running a certain, like, like a typical service itself will end up being, at least a lot of our services use DR. So we end up running the same service across multiple clusters. Um, and those clusters are isolated from each other. We don't use like federation or anything like that. So, so we actually don't use a service account really as our services identity. Um, we actually use a, 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 a different mechanism of doing that. But I guess, I guess, so the, um, I guess to like to make SMI useful, I guess it might need to have a, be able to um, have identities that are represented that maybe that are larger than one cluster or make that part pluggable to a certain extent. So there's a, there's a type of identity that can be used or something that's extensible in there because the identity is a tricky, is a, is a tricky um, thing. Um, yeah, well, that's debatable because if if we look at what cloud vendors are doing, there is a IAM role to service account. There is a GKE IAM to GCP IAM to service account and so on. So in a way, even if you have different ways of uh, identities, you can link them back in Kubernetes to a service account. And SMI works with service accounts. So if you can link a service account to an external identity, then SMI doesn't have to deal with it. <laughs> That's how we got away with it. Uh, just yeah, as you kind of come in from other clusters, though, it's a little bit tricky, right? So I'm crawling in from one cluster to another cluster. Now I have to have like a transitive, like service account knowledge in between the clusters and stuff. But so like then the multi-cluster kind of, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, but yeah, I, guess, I, I'm, I guess I'm not really like, I guess I'm not really debating like the, the service account aspect. I'm just saying more from like the, the idea of a set of APIs that are focused on the consumption of services um, and the attributes that are tailored towards service consumption. Um, I think that that would be valuable as a way to build sort of a, an administration boundary around that so it can be used in a multi-tenant fashion. I guess that's more of the, the thing that I think would be useful. Um, so that's, I guess that's my, that's just my. Thank you. That's, that's yeah. Um, are you familiar with traffic specs and traffic target? Have you gotten a chance to kind of go through some of that? I did, I did look, uh, yeah, yeah. I think one way to um, kind of like uh, uh, make the logic around what is accessible on your service, what routes and, and configuration is accessible on your service is to kind of like reuse the traffic spec object, uh, traffic specs object. Um, uh, across different traffic targets, um, which would be used for different services uh, to configure different, how different services can access a particular service. Um, so maybe that's something to kind of look into, but I'd love to like dig in further a little bit because I think what you're talking about from the user experience side is, is very interesting. And there might be like a higher level concept that we could, uh, we could think through we haven't really tackled um, retries and circuit breaking, although that's something that comes up repeatedly. Um, so I think maybe a good way to go about this is to open up a GitHub issue around this topic and like dig in a little bit further and see where the gaps are in terms of like what we have today and, and what, what we would need to kind of fulfill the user experience that you're talking about. Sure. More like a GitHub discussion. Oh yeah, I'm still not used to using GitHub discussions. Do you like we, those, Stefan? Yeah, we are using it for two weeks in, in Flux CD. Yeah. And it's awesome because you, if, I don't know, during an issue, other issues are arising. So uh... that comment was specific to someone else's comment, right? And in, in, in discussions, you can do this branching of, uh, replying to a certain uh, comment which is yeah. which is great for api designs and all, all things like we use it mainly for api design proposal okay yeah so then this makes sense um to do as a discussion because like so usually um jason we just like it, have people open up an issue and a pull request with the changes that they specific changes that they propose but since this might need a little bit more async back and forth the discussion makes more sense here for sure mm -hmm. And do, do you guys do anything with like like um, RFCs or anything as far as like a, like a write up of what you would expect out of it, or is it just kind of a discussion? We really should. Uh, no, we don't have an RFC process at the moment. Um, I could 
I could build one for us. I could just like write a process, a quick process up for us, if that makes sense. Stefan, what do you think? Yeah, we, we currently have a template uh, issue for proposal where you say, hey, I my proposal affects uh, one of the current APIs or I want to add the new API. Then we have a section, okay, uh, can you detail some use cases for it? Why it's good, why it's not? Uh, now RFC is more uh, complicated uh, in terms of uh, things you have to fill in. I felt like uh, the current issue template is enough for for what we are seeing but yeah if we if we could evolve to an rfc proposal type um, but yeah i feel like we should start with the github discussion for uh, big topics that we we didn't touch yet in smi and this and from there uh, create issues after we, we we brainstorm and so on i think that's um in the interest of lowering the barrier of getting started on this, Jason, how about you just open an issue in the SMI spec repo? And then if we want to build a discussion out of it, we certainly can. But I don't want yeah, to add can. extra tasks for you. <laughs> we can move an issue uh, to a discussion and vice versa. So it's very easy for us to move them. It's not a problem. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna move forward here. Uh, the only other thing that we have on the uh, agenda is I linked issue 129. Um, uh, I think his name is Adam. Oh, Alex Long uh, had proposed that um, we extend the SMI metric specs to support um, uh, metrics per route. Um, and I think that this is a great idea. And it, any issues with the proposal. I approved it, I know Stefan approved it, but it just needs to be rebased, so I ping them on Slack. If anybody has any um, uh, feedback or issues or anything like that, please, um, please feel free to comment on that thread. Uh, any, anything right now on the metrics per route bit? Okay. Um, Brian, does your team handle, like, is, is Kiali on your team? Oh, Redbeard just walked away. That's cool. Um, but yeah, oh, okay, so uh, that's- Yes, well, oh, sorry. Oh, I, I, I share an office with my wife, so when I'm talking, I need to uh, do that. But yes, indirectly, the Kiali team uh, is involved with me. That's part of the reason kind of why I was here, both dropping in to see if any of them showed up uh, as well as uh, do a little bit of an audit. Um, you know, we have a number of concerns and interest where we would really uh, like to be cl more closely conforming with the SMI spec and yeah. uh, some other ideas around uh, potentially integrating the OpenShift router, uh, which is a specialized ingress uh, that Red Hat has had for a while um, with uh, SMI. So um, yes, uh, that being said, you can expect that folks from Kiali will be showing up to the SMI call uh, soon uh, okay. from that Great. team directly. Yeah, I know our community is super interested in getting SMI support in um, in Kiali for sure. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like obsessed. Um, so that would be great. Anything to make that happen would be um, great. I'm happy to help. Uh, John Hewn is on this call. He's on um, on my team and is working on uh, metrics related stuff. So um, he's going to be touching SMI metrics pretty soon. Um, and yeah, there's a there's a lot of interest around there. So if it makes more sense to like have a longer call, I'm happy to help set something up and, and dig a little deeper into whatever y'all need and, and help. Okay, great. I will uh, talk to uh, Maltron Leal, uh, who is the product manager for Kiali uh, inside of yeah. Red Hat, and then get a couple engineers and him uh, coordinated and in touch with you. Okay, great. Thank you. Of course. Uh, what else is on this agenda? Anybody have any topics they'd like to um, bring up? Yes, yeah, Stefan, what's up? So now that we've released uh, the SDK, thank you for that. 
uh, I want to move forward with the TCP route uh, specification. Um, we, I've opened an issue like long time ago on it and everything was blocked because yeah, we need to add the spec to all the things. Um, so I'm, I'm going to move forward and, and create a pull request on the SMI spec to define TCP routes and unblock the UDP route. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to ping uh, people on Slack for reviews. Okay, I'm excited about it though. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, by, by tomorrow it will, it will be there. I have a pretty good idea of what what should look like, but I, it was blocked. So now it's uh, it's time to move forward. Sounds good. All right. Um, what else? Uh, one, one more thing I wanted to, to bring up, like when we uh, last discussed about breaking changes in, in the API, we said, okay, maybe it's Kubernetes is not ready for an admission controller, um, but I'm guessing most cloud vendors now are on 1.16. Mm -hmm. uh, my proposal is to drop support for anything uh, below 1.16 and uh, work on um, proper admission controller that can deal with uh, changes. Now that we also have the spec inside our API, it should be straightforward how to create with QBuilder such a, an admission controller for upgrades. I don't know if yeah. someone has um, concerns about Kubernetes lower than 116. Um, Asia is probably... on 117, I think. Who's on it? 117? Azure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't even. I don't even know that we support uh, one. I know we dropped support for 114 recently. Um, okay. Uh, no, I don't have any any concerns at the moment. Um, you want to just open up an issue in case uh, something comes up. Is there an issue already on the SDK yes. repo? Yes, yeah. Yes. So I'll, I'll <laughs> was it think again on that issue and say, hey, now we can do it. Uh, okay. The cloud vendors have moved to 116, so I think it's uh, we are no longer blocked by that. Okay, sounds good. Um, oh, and then the other thing I was going to focus on, it uh, like maybe Thursday or Friday of this week, is um, like Kubernetes ingress and kind of like adding some documentation around how SMI thinks about north north south traffic. I know you opened a proposal or opened an issue around that, Stefan. So I just I meant to get to it before this meeting, but I didn't. Um, so I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I think we should look into Ingress V two and um, yeah, uh, build something around it. Um, should work mm -hmm. perfectly fine uh, with SMI. Sounds good. Anything else? Not for me. Okay. Uh, we're still having some issues around like um, how to think about uh, if you install a traffic split, but there's a traffic target that doesn't allow the traffic split to actually happen. Like what the error codes should be that bubble up um, and how to modify the status object. Thanks, thanks for the status. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, so we're just still thinking through that, but I will just update the issue. I think Stefan, you replied to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think being layer seven, we should return the correct uh, access denied status code. Okay. Uh, if, if cool. that's the case. I think that's the, the best way to communicate to the consumer that access is denied, not just, you know, um, TCP timeout or something like that. Because we right. uh, we act on layer seven, we can return a meaningful status code instead of Kubernetes CNI that cannot do that and it blocks the, the stream itself, like a network right. policy. Right, sounds good. Um, Okay, uh, that's literally all that I've been thinking about. Uh, any Anything else anyone wants to add? Any of sessions at KubeCon? Redbeard, you? Not this time? No? All right, cool.
All right, I'll just give everyone three minutes back. Thank you everyone who is new and uh, introduced themselves and everybody else for being here. Have a great day. Bye.